All right, guys, today we're coming at you with a bow build. We're actually going to go through, um, tell you why we picked out this bow, and we're going to walk you through and pick out all the accessories and to show you exactly why we chose the accessories we did for this bow. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so today we're doing a bow build, and uh, me and Cody were doing some talking, and I wanted a bow that I can actually shoot some distance something that's purely go out have fun and shoot some just bomber shots oh, yeah. so we went through and i shot a bunch of the different bows and uh, i decided to go with the Hoyt, and this is the venom pro 33. so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing opened kind of go through the specs of this bow so this is a oh that's a new hat yeah check that thing out that's green the other ones they've been like gray those are nice yeah these are slick Big fan of companies that giveaway hats for the bow. Absolutely. So, Venom Pro 33 in the wilderness. I wanted something I could get here pretty quick because I've been itching for a new bow. Yeah, I think you're the feet on the sharp. Really good. Like it's solid. So, looks good. Cody, let's go over the specs of this bow real quick. So, this is the new 2022 Hoyt Venom Pro 33. Yep. So what are we looking at? 33 inches ATA, about mm -hmm. a six and a quarter inch brace height, roughly 334. I actually think they're underselling that IVO. What's wild is I believe this bow shoots faster at 29 than it does at 29 and a half because you're on that two mod versus that three mod. Oh, okay. Yep, that so makes sense. super efficient and this, it's gonna be a machine, dude. It's gonna be very quick. Absolutely, and so the 33 inch ATA, we went with that opposed to a shorter bow. Um, just because, stability. yeah, stability. Yep. We want something we can really shoot out some serious distance mm -hmm. with. So we're looking at 100 plus yard shots oh, yeah. that we can do, and purely for fun. It's and gonna be for our bomber event we have later this year. So. Absolutely, which we, you know we do a couple times a year where we go out, and we set targets way out, mm -hmm. all the way out to 100 plus yards. So we wanted something built specifically around that. We got a bunch of bad accessories we want to throw in this thing too, man. So that's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna go ahead now. We're gonna walk around the shop and we're gonna take you through the shop and pick out all the different accessories that we're gonna mount on it and explain to you why we're actually running the accessories we are. So let's go. Sounds good. All right guys, so the purpose of this bow build is to shoot long distance with and it's also gonna be used as a hunting bow. So we're gonna try and find an arrow that can be shot with both. So for that reason, long range, we want a smaller diameter arrow to deflect the wind and whatnot and make sure that we have a little bit more accurate, more forgiving setup in a sense. So we're gonna start with an Easton four millimeter match grade 300. We got the typical 50 grain insert. We're gonna plug a 100 grain head on it. And we went with a 225 tack vein. We went with a four fletch. The reason why I like a four fletch, I think it steers the broadhead a little bit better in my opinion. Um, and it's just your regular, a little bit of a right helical on it. 90 degree as far as configuration for the X-Vane. Moving on from there, we're gonna go with the luxury necessity is what I'm gonna call this. This is the new Hoyt, this is the Go Sticks bow stand. Um, for hunting out of ground blinds or just setting your bow down for a, you know, shooting at the bomber event and stuff like that, you don't have to lay it down. If you want something a little bit nicer, we're gonna rock these guys. Let's work our way over to stabilizers. Stabilizers, all right. I'm a big fan of a quick disconnect. Um, for this option, we're just gonna run a standard 10 degree quick disconnect. We're gonna use the lower mounting hole for it and this thing's gonna look really sharp. And to match that, we're gonna go with some bee stinger rods on here as well, some bars. Uh, we're probably gonna do a 10 and an eight. 10 and an eight's pretty typical. We don't want our bow too heavy. Wrong color, where is our green at? I know we've got green here, down at the bottom. So, Gonna rock the 10 inch micro hex and the 8 inch. Boom. And this is their olive grab cover or cover. Moving right along, we've got our sight. This is a new company, um, Redline. I recently did a video on it. If you want to know more information, check out on our previous post videos with that on YouTube. And this is a RL1. This is a carbon sight. Uh, just super light, you know, you can put a lens in there if you like to, and for the money, it's a hard option to beat right now. Moving right along, we're gonna continue with the Redline accessories, and like I said, their stuff is for any archer or bow hunter that, you know, they want some good stuff that is, you know, a little bit more affordable, that way they can sink money into other things. Uh, we're gonna run the Redline back bar mount. 
Uh, it's, I really like this thing. It's got gritted teeth inside of it, so it's anti-slip. It's not going to move on you or anything like that. And it comes in at 40 bucks. That's a hard, hard one to beat. So moving right along, one thing we don't skimp on here at our shop is putting on the best air rest that you can buy or that you can afford, essentially. Uh, we're a big QAD uh, dealer as well as Hamskin as well as Ripcord. Um, for this build, we're going to do the tried and true. We're going to do the Hybrid Hunter Pro. We have this guy in OD Green, and this is the new updated rebound dampener system for 2022. So it's going to be cool to see this, you know, as far as what was on the primer and the Trinities. We're going to run this now. As the last thing we're going to need is a good old quiver to hunt with. I'm a big fan of a tight spot. They've got a new one this year called the Shift. And we ain't got no arrow to do it. All right. In order to keep this thing in matching fashion, we are going to run an OD Green quiver. Oh, right here. And we got every color option available just about. That's the new shift. This thing is slick, man. Very slick. Five arrow quiver, super easy to detach. I like it because it's got two arrow retainers in there instead of one. So your arrows aren't really going to come out. And you have that nifty little rope right there if you don't want to have this thing hanging on your bow, hanging on your stand or any kind of material that'll hold it. Let's go build this thing up. All right, guys. So we went through and picked out all the accessories for the bow. And if you didn't notice, Cody greatly influences all my decisions when it comes to bow builds. So whether it's my hunting setup or a hybrid bow like this, I go to Cody for everything. And he's the one that really talks me through everything and helps me pick it out. So there's a reason that we've chosen all the accessories we have. So we're going to go ahead. Um, Cody's going to put his magic touch on this thing and get it built. Um, get everything leveled, and then we are going to take and uh, take it in the back, tune it, and shoot it through paper. So let's go ahead and get this thing. Let's get this thing built real quick, Cody. Do some on this. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. So when you're building a bow, do you have a process that you go through as far as you yeah. know? Step one, two, three, four. I just want to get the bow. First thing I always like to do is get a bow level, you know. And I'm a big fan of using levels. Sometimes I'll just eyeball them and get them real close and. Honestly, when you run it through paper, it's going to dictate what you got to do either way, regardless. Right. So we'll use our tools of trade right here. We got our, the Hamski third axis level. This is a second gen. So, and all we're going to do is just make sure this guy is approximately level. And like I said, I don't think any of these levels are truly accurate, though, in the sense of to a precision, like, you know, when you get a high quality laser style level right these are getting us in the ballpark and that's what we want so how important is it whenever you're mounting say your rest and your sight and everything that everything is level uh i'd say it's pretty critical you know like i said some bows like to run a little bit knock high so up to an eighth of an inch when we start seeing bows that are running higher than that or lower than that then we know we got an issue is either with the arrow spine limb deflection need to be changed what's the beautiful thing about hoyts they all come with the same limb deflection. No, it makes so it easy. makes it easy. You know, there's other brands. I think Matthews has a limb deflection chart. I know Prime does. PSE does. I think Botex are all the same, or they might be just a few numbers difference. It's not super, you know, noticeable in that sense. But uh, other than that, Hoyt, gratefully, they use the same limb deflection chart. The thing that they do with their stuff is they have a shim, shim system in there. So you have different shims, four different shims that you can locate inside the axles and move, basically move the cam over left to right depending on what kind of tear you get. Right. So I like to set these bows up at 13 sixteenths as far as a center shot. And I like to start with them running dead level through the burger hole. Okay. Sometimes about 10 to 15 percent of the bows, they don't mind being ran a little bit higher and it actually it gives the, the appeal of making the bow hold a little bit better on target. So um, we're going to start dead level with that running through the burger but I think it's going to tune really nice from there. And typically we see these bows tuned within one or three shots, one to three shots. So we'll get everything squared up to start with. You gotta turn your hat around. That's how you know it's serious. Alright, so this is about as level as this level is gonna get for us. Alright, we got our handy dandy ham ski right here. This is probably this is my favorite rest on the market. Um, the Epsilon, we didn't go with that route just because you can't get any. Don't have any. So, we were fortunate enough to get these guys in. and man, They we actually just, came in. Like yesterday, I yeah. think, or the day prior. So we're just going to put our... I'm a big on. Hamski fan, so all my bows have Hamskis on them. Indeed, they are indestructible. Indestructible. This is a key right here as well. Um, when I first started selling Hamski, I never put the felt on there. 
and just because you don't think you need it with it being rubber it's going to keep everything quiet that little over mold system right what happens is, is over time as you shoot this bow that arrow will cause friction on that and your center shot will actually get lower and lower and lower and lower and eventually you wonder why you miss it 40 yards by five or six inches because of that run the felt on these it definitely does help on the new epsilons i don't believe you have to i think it's a little it's that a, material's different yeah it's a and much different material yeah that the um, actual it's a, it's a different overmold material on that well tail. Though the Epsilon is solid. Yeah. So another thing is that we like to have our arrow rest square. Got those guys square. And we've got to get one more tool, which I've got right here. This is the most handy dandy Allen key when working on a Hoyt. See, we got a little nub right there. Makes it super easy to get in here and to do some adjustments we'll just a touch perfect we got it running right through that 33 logo and I move it up just a hair a little tip on these guys when you tighten this down it'll actually bring the arrow up like that so we're running pretty much level as you can see through there Perfect. Next, we're going to do some knock set. So I actually tie mine a little bit differently than most people. We're going to run some kiwi on this thing. I think kiwi's going to look sharp. All right. So I'll actually take my strand, come around the back side, flip flop them. I'll take my finger and hold that tag in right there. One, two, three. Four. I saw this actually not done by a guy named Joel Turner on a recurve bow, and it makes it super easy to adjust it if you need to, but it still stays in place, and it just looks really clean. So you see how that looks right there, how it's stacked. You don't have to do any tying knots or anything. You can slide it down. I'm going to double check one more time. Level's perfect. I'm going to cinch this guy down, and we're just going to tie a knot. Right on top of that guy. Perfect. We got our excess. We're just going to go down, and what I like to do is create a little bit of a gap in here to ensure there's no knock pinch. So I'm going to do the same thing. I might go a strand or two less around my finger. And here's what I like about this. So you see how I have that gap? I can actually turn this. I'm going to get it out of the way with it. I can pull on one strand and get it really close. You see how I'm doing that? And we're going to actually go down half of one. And I just like that small gap, just like that. String is up, fires up, or to the side in this case. All right. All right. We're going to add some wildness to it. We're going to do some flow green. Make it offset just a little bit. Before we do that, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip. And I learned this a couple weeks ago. Um, sometimes when you have to fight a peep, don't put a D loop on first. Actually, put the peep side in, and it's gonna give that string its little bit of what I'll call natural rotation to allow you to have the perfect alignment for your peep and your D loop. You don't really have to manipulate the string that much in order to do so, even with a stock string. So we're actually gonna run a little bit smaller of a peep side with this, being our housing. If you can see right inside here, is a little bit tighter. So we're actually just going to try and fit it right around that green. So we're going to run one with an eighth. And we're going to go pop that in the press real quick. We'll be right back. Let's go ahead and check the timing on this rascal. Like I said, I'm pulling it right there at the string. So 71, 71.2. And all right, so what we have right here, you see the top cam is hitting right on the spot that bottom cam is 
money. Good job, Quaid. I love when a boat comes in here. You ain't got to do anything to it as far as timing goes. So we're good to go on that. Holding weight, what does that say? 12, 12 pounds? Probably right around 85% or so. Perfect. Sweet. Next. Another little tip. I'm a big fan of leaving these actually inside the string. The reason why is let's say if we want to make a peep adjustment later, and I've had this happen to me several times, you got the peep cut out, you got it in the press, as soon as you press it, it falls out of the string. So we're going to keep this here. That way we don't have to count thread fibers to make sure our strands are evenly or equally distributed across our peep. Um, honestly, right where it's at, it looks about perfect. So we're just gonna slide this up. And you see how we just about have it money like that. That's it, man. So we got a 71.2 pound bow in time. Peep is in. Let's run back and get this monster built. I took that white piece of string out and I'm just gonna put a more neutral color in there, like one of these. And I'm just gonna run it up inside here. And truthfully on a Hoyt, you could probably use that whole shot uh, system they have right there. We're just gonna run this in there. And we can trim it down too, so. Now time to tie our D-loop. So I like to get a really big mushroom cloud right there, a little mushroom tip going. I'm gonna go ahead and burn it. Really don't, I'm not trying to catch it on fire, just trying to make it. Just a nice little knot. Cool it down. And press it like that. So you see we have a nice little knot Start with your D loop. All right, we're gonna fold this guy in half. This is how I like to tie him. Top knot's gonna to go on first. We're gonna start on the side opposite. We're gonna fold in both ends, pull it tight. And what my job right here is to make sure that guy is enclosed completely around that. I'm gonna pull that tight. And I don't like a little, a small D loop by any means. I like something I can anchor with like I want or like I'm supposed to. So you see how this burn is away from the face of a right handed shooter, pointing that way towards that side of the riser. We're going to start, we're going to follow that knot. We're going to go up, pull it snug, not super tight, just snug. I'm going to come back around and we're going to fold just like that. These things are really handy dandy. And what I want to do now is just take some of the slack. I'm pulling up on here. Perfect. And you see how we got a touch of a gap. That's what we want. I'm going to get it right there. I'm going to flare this guy out. That's money, man. Tips if you know what that, that phrase is from. That knot's perfect. Now we're going to take this. I'm just going to give it a little bit of an expansion. I like my D-loops about three quarters of an inch to an inch. That's what we're shooting for right there. All right, guys, so now we have the sight right here. We're going to bolt this rascal on. So this rebound dampener, I like it to be a little bit with about an inch, inch and a half from that limb. So you see how we're, we need to go up just a little bit more. I like to stretch this thing out because it will expand and this little well tail right here will rise up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
Get all the slack out. That's perfect. So I'm a big fan of running this guy on there for one reason. I think it contains the cord for the limb-driven rest a little bit better than the other pad they have. I'm going to put it about an inch and a half or so away. That looks good. All right. I want this up for a reason. I want to check our center shot and not necessarily looking for up and down. I just want to look for left and right. I'm going to grab my tape measure. I'm just going to measure 13, 16. So what I like about the Hoyts is you can traditionally split them down the limb bolt and they run right through it, run right through 13, 16. So I need to bring it in. This side real quick. That should be good. Let's check it once more. That's it right there. I'm gonna lock this down. Dude, this thing's a machine. This thing is wicked. Got our ghost sticks on here as well. This is new from Hoyt this year. They just simply, you can take these off if you like, they just screw in. And running down, boom. All we have to do left is we're gonna, we're gonna get our peep pretty much squared away as far as the height of it. And then we're gonna level our first, second, third axis with it. We're gonna run it through paper and we're gonna be dropping bombs with this thing later. All right, guys, so we're on the range. Cody's got this thing put together. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna get the peep height set. So we've got the draw length set at 29 inches. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw this back and Cody's gonna make sure that the height is good. Corner of the mouth, tip of the nose. See, we got textbook, arrows clear right in there. How does that look? That's perfect. We're good to go. We're gonna go get this thing in the tuning room. We're gonna go shoot it through paper and let's see what it does. We'll be back. All right, so we've got everything set. Bow's in time. Now we're gonna go ahead and shoot it through paper. Maybe you're ready. And down just a little bit for me. Right in there. Okay. Now. And down just a little bit. Right in there whenever you're ready. All right, guys, we finally got it tuned um, and looking good through paper. So I don't shoot as much as I probably should. Um, and that really, shooting through paper highlights that, right? So we had to make a couple adjustments on the rest and then Cody had to walk me through some additional form um, issues that I had as far as anchoring and shooting a hinge that I don't generally shoot. Um, so I had to walk me through a couple things. So we got it tuned, got it looking good through paper. Looking sharp. Um, so we'll walk you up, show you the hole we just got, and, uh, and then we'll recap this thing. All right guys, so we started getting a hard or knock left tear and we went and revisited the center shot again and my tape measure must be off. I think my actual, the end of it is a little bit longer. We did it with another one and we found out we needed to move the rest in a lot more than what we anticipated. And at the end result, after doing that, you saw before so, end result we get right here. And it's still probably just a skosh knock right, but that could be Zach's form or, you know, or him shooting a hinge. Sometimes, depending on the release, you can get a slightly different tear depending on the head angle of it. So. That right there, we're, good. we're gonna call that good for right now. We'll do some other tuning with it with broadheads and stuff later to make sure everything, the flight is looking really smooth on it. But other than that, this is the conclusion of our bomber bow that we're building right now. We're gonna head back and do a gear list check one more time and show you again what we put on this bow. And we're also gonna chronograph it as well to show you what kind of speeds we're getting out of it. 
All right, guys, so we are going to do a speed test for you on this bow. So just a quick recap, we've got the Hoyt Pro or Venom Pro 33 at 71 pounds, 85% let off. Um, we're shooting a 445 grain arrow through it at 29 inches. So let's see. Two hundred ninety-six feet per second. So she is moving. That's right where I was hoping to be, somewhere around the two nineties, and we are there. So we're gonna head back over there, um, and we're gonna recap the bow, go through all the accessories on the bow, um, yeah, and talk with Cody and uh, go over exactly why we put them on there, and you know, recap why we built the bow the way we did. All right, guys. So bow is complete. Point. Um, Venom Pro 33, their new 2022 bow, and um, I gotta say I'm impressed. Yeah, it's moving, man. We actually we shot it um, off record with a 125, and it shot what 48 or 288. 288. So with a 100 grain head at 445, mm -hmm. you know, 296. Yeah. So it's moving. Yeah, 470 grain arrow versus a 445 grain arrow. That's a that's a good. That's a nice little dissipation between the two. Yeah, and that's what we were hoping to get out of this bow. This bow was purely built so we can shoot some serious distance with yep. it. Um, just something fun to take out and, you know, just shoot around. And, and that's what we got out of it. You know, we're getting impressive speeds. Yep. Uh, the bow holds phenomenally. So we'll, we'll go through the, the entire uh, recap, all the accessories we got, on, we got on it from the ground up. And I'll let Cody actually um, go over them with you real quick. But starting from the ground up, we've got the... We're going to start with the ghost sticks, man. This is a, like I said, a, a luxury that is a necessity, I think. If Which is awesome. On the Hoyts, this is this is where it's at. This is nice. Um, we still kept the short stop stabilizer on there. We might as well use the quick disconnect on it. Yep. If you wanted to, you could run this without the disconnect mm -hmm. and just run the longer bar and add that to it if you'd like. But um, I, for some reason, have found that when I put a back bar mount closer to my hand, a bow naturally wants to hold better. Right. Instead of, if we think about leverage in a sense, if everything is at your hand, you're gonna be stronger. The more you put it down, the heavier it's gonna feel. Yep. So we went that route with it. Um, we actually stuck the longer rod on the back. So the 10 inch rods on the back, it's got your typical three ounces, eight inches on the front. The disconnect probably makes it around nine. So we got a lot of good lever leverage and fulcrum points right here as far as weight to make this bow hold better. Working up, we've got the Hamski, the Hybrid Hunter Pro micro adjustable sight. So, Micro tunability, super nice, repeatable, repeatable, repeatable. Which is, if you do any tuning or messing with your own bows, it's yeah. it makes all the difference in the world. So whenever we were paper tuning this bow, you know, we went off the um, the factory settings yeah. for the center shot, but we did have to make a couple of adjustments in order for that the bow to bullet hole. And with the micro adjustment um, capability, it makes it super fast, super easy, Indeed. and there's no question as to how far or yeah. how much you've moved the actual rest. So typically, like most, 90% of the bows like to be tuned at 13, 16, some are 7, 8. Um, I've always shot my Hoyts, and I've shot Hoyt for a long time now, probably a little over half a decade. Um, and I've always ran my bows, the center shot, through the center of the limb bolt. And I've had a first shot bullet hole every single time, whether it's a bear shaft or a fletched arrow, and I can go on the range and do the same thing with it, right. um, just shooting into a target. Um, I started out at 13, 16, so it's slightly on the outer edge of the limb bolt. It initially gave us a hard knock right, or hard knock left tear, excuse me and it was a touch low, so we bumped the rest up just a little bit, moved the center shot to where the arrow is splitting the limb bolt, and literally that, that cured all the problems with it. And if, seeing this thing shoot on the range, man, this thing is gonna pound, like it's gonna pound all day long. It's got great specs, 33 inches ATA. It's a good hybrid bow build in a sense. I don't, we've already did a hybrid bow build, right. but this is, this is a machine yeah, gun. Yeah, it fits me great. I mean, yep. it feels good. On my, I love the grip on the Hoyt bows. It's, you know, the feel of the bow overall, the draw cycle on it's it. Very it's, smooth, it's incredibly very smooth, man. Very smooth. Yep. And like I said, I was just talking to Zach earlier. I was like, man, we have a four fletch on there. And if we want to increase our speed just a little bit, you know, to hit that 300 feet a second, run a three fletch without just a small helical on there. Not a lot, just a little bit. And just to see how that bow really wants to, you know, get down with it. But um, other than that, we could also twist the cables up and get a few more pounds out of it if we wanted to. We could probably run this thing around 73 or so and still be fine. And you could still hit that 300 feet a second. But working off that, we have our sight. We've got a three-pin slider sight. So probably a typical is 20, 30, 40, yeah. rock, dial the range down from there. But and the reason we went with a three-pin is uh, I'm not opposed to a single pin. Yeah. But 
I do want this in case I decide to hunt with it or whatnot. I like three pins that are fixed, so I know when that boat, when that dial is set at that initial 20 yards, yeah. my 20, 30, and 40 are there. They're fixed. I don't have to worry about it. If I have to take a shot longer than 40 yards, then I'll go ahead and dial. It's a good secondary adjustment, or I should say, uh, let's say if we have a deer at 20 and it takes mm -hmm. five or six steps. Hey, yeah. we know he might not be at 30, but he's not at 20 anymore. Yeah, we got an we indicator. Have an, we got an indicator yeah. to aim off of, to refer a reference pin, essentially. Right. Um, other than that, man, we got the different cues of green on there. If you notice, we've got the new tight spot shift. This thing sits stupidly tight with so, this boat. It's, I mean, you can't even, you just have to look at it and see. I mean, I mean, every, it is truly in line. It and is like in I said, line, that's yes. the marketing term for the year. And everything it's true. holds, it's, holds wonderfully on this boat, even with a quiver. Yeah. And for the guys that are like questioning whether you shoot the quiver on or off, I think the back bar mount makes a big difference too. That oh, you absolutely. can adjust the angle of it and change the pitch and how it holds and stuff like that. Um, man, that's a sweet bow. I can't wait for mine to get here to do a bow build. Oh yeah, I know. Here's a couple months. Yeah, a couple We're months out. Loving. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a secret on yeah, what we got coming be a in. Good so deal. It's gonna be it's gonna be a speed demon for sure. So we'll yeah. be burning it down. Well, good deal. So guys, remember, um, we've got Extreme Hunter Athlete coming up here on June 11th. So, and that's another thing with this bow. Um, I wanted something that I can train with for Extreme Hunter Athlete, and this bow is gonna be um, for that. It's a little bit heavier, but I mean, it holds like a rock. Heavy steady, man. That's it. Heavy steady. So Extreme Hunter Athlete, June 11th. Um, there'll be a link down in the description um, for all you guys that are interested in it. It's a mix of physical fitness and 3D archery. Um, follow the Extreme Hunter Athlete Instagram page. We're constantly putting content, daily workouts, from my personal workouts to other guys getting after it. It'll be up on that page. Uh, and also in the description below is gonna be a full list of everything that we use to do this build out with. So if you got questions, it'll link right there. Uh, all this stuff you can get off our website. So make sure you do head over to the website, extremeoutfitters.com um, and give us some feedback. What do you guys think? What other bow builds would you like to see? What do you think of the new Hoyt Venom series? And what bows are you guys shooting? So until next time, uh, we'll see you then.